Hey everyone, so today we're going to have a look at illusion, okay, so that's an illusion with an A um, and how it's important in 10 things I hate about you and the taming of the shoe. Alright, so your goal for today is to understand what an illusion is and to be able to identify when illusion is being used as an intertextual technique. So you studied intertextuality the other day um, and on your sheet there's a little question about that to sort of revise what you've done. So you should be able to tell me what intertextuality is. Illusion is just a part of intertextuality. So your success criteria is to be able to define what an illusion is, um, to show me that you understand why an illusion might be used um, and to show that you can identify an illusion. Okay. So what does the term illusion mean? Um, an illusion is a brief reference to a person, place, thing or idea of historical, cultural, literary or political importance. Now that sounds really big, but really what an illusion is, is it's when a new text really quickly references something from an old text or an old idea or an old person that may have passed away, like they might reference another um, author or filmmaker. So an illusion is usually a passing comment or image, like it doesn't take up a whole amount of time in a film, but sometimes films use a lot of illusions. So when you watch The Taming of the Shrew, there are heaps of Shakespeare illusions in it, which you guys have probably noticed already. Um, and the composer usually expects the reader to possess enough knowledge to be able to spot an illusion and to grasp its importance. Sometimes illusions don't get noticed and it still usually doesn't take away from the meaning of the text. But if you do understand an illusion in, in a film or a book, um, when it's paying attention or when it's referencing an old film or book, then it can often make the meaning of the new text really, really important and um, it can often give like an extra layer of meaning. Um, so they're usually used or quite often they're used to pay homage to another text and homage is one of the words which you've got to look up on your sheet so you can tell me exactly what that means. Um, and sometimes they're used, as I said before, as an extra layer of meaning and to further link an adaptation to an original version of that story. So this of illusion means that a composer can simplify complex ideas and emotions because responders can understand an idea by comparing the reference to the ideas and emotions from an original source. So one way to explain that is in The Taming of the Shrew, we know that one of the biggest ideas is sort of the female role or how women are supposed to act. Um, what the Taming of the Shrew does is it alludes to, or what, sorry, Ten Things does, is it alludes constantly to the Taming of the Shrew. And so we understand here that it's referencing those ideas and emotions. So a lot of you told me that you really didn't like the idea that the Taming of the Shrew sort of presents in terms of women. And so Ten Things alludes to Taming of the Shrew all the time in order to override or give modern views about what women should be. All right, and here, let's see if you can notice the, um, there's a question on your sheet there. What is the illusion that you see in the bottom picture there? Okay, let's have a look. Do not get illusion mixed up with illusion. An illusion with an eye is something which is usually like sort of thought of as an optical illusion so where something might play tricks on your eyes um, or it's sort of something that um, is false is an illusion all right now an illusion is a different thing as you have seen before all right whoops I jumped ahead there so I want you guys when you have finished watching this you can come back to this part of the film or you can pause it now and have a look and see what, if you can tell me what some of the illusions here are. So at the end on your sheet, can you find what the mistake here is? And in this picture, can you find the snake? You can see that this one moves around and I'm pretty sure you can see what the illusion is here. We've got the front and the side. Illusion, not illusion, so don't get them muddled up. All right, now an illusion. Here we have, most of you, I hope, have seen The Little Mermaid. This is King Triton, The Little Mermaid's dad. The Little Mermaid uses so many illusions because it's based on an old Hans Christian Andersen story from the 1800s. Um, so the Disney version uses Poseidon, which is the old Greek god here. 
uses him as a sort of template for Triton or King Triton. And so you can see the illusion being used. Old turned into new and it's referenced at certain points throughout the film when we see King Triton. So that's one really obvious illusion. Disney uses them all the time. All right, here we have the Lion King. We all know King Scar, we all know Scar, the brother of Mufasa who dies. Zazu says he'd make a very handsome throw rug, and he did. So in Hercules, they literally turned Scar into a throw rug. So there's Disney alluding to one of their own films really, really quickly. Most people would pick that up if they'd seen The Lion King. Here we have Sebastian from The Little Mermaid in um, Aladdin. All right, so they're referencing their own film. And here we have Frozen. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but in the corner here you have Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. So they show up in Frozen, basically I reckon because Frozen is a story about a really strong girl who saves her sister by herself. Rapunzel is also, or Tangled, is also about quite a strong woman and they take the old story of Rapunzel and they make her into like a strong sort of role, female role model. All right, so the ideas are sort of linked through this little illusion by adding these two to Frozen. All right, a couple more, again with The Little Mermaid. This is from the 1640s, it's Mary Magdalene. She's sort of, it's a really famous painting where she's sort of pondering life. She's thinking about life and you can see how thoughtful she's being here or looking into the flame. And here we know that um, Ariel is singing um, I Want to Be Part of Their World or whatever that song is. And she's also contemplating becoming a human, all right? So all of these thoughtful ideas, and because they showed that painting, we can link it to the original painting and the meaning of that painting. So really quick illusion. All right, now I've got this one from, sorry, I'm trying to buzz through these. Let's see if I can move me down into the corner. So here's the original sonnet. Now in the um, 10 Things I Hate About You, we see this sonnet being used by Mr. Morgan, coolest English teacher ever. Um, he only gets up to here to dote, but I want you on your sheet to tell me why you think this sonnet is alluded to in 10 Things I Hate About You, why this sonnet in particular, and you have to tell me why they turn it into a rap, all right? Why does it make 10 Things I Hate About You much better because they have modernized it? You have to tell me why, all right? So I'll quickly play it. Open up our books to page 73, sign 141. Listen up. At faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for there be a thousand errors. No, but tis my heart to love what they despise. Who in despite of you is pleased to do? All right, I'm really hoping you could hear that. All right, so now you have to tell me why. Why did they use that? All right, so just to recap, if I can get this to work, here we go. Why is an illusion important? Illusion is important because it allows an audience to understand the connection between texts and because illusions can reinforce the meaning of certain texts. So as I've said, it can reinforce an idea. It can link to ideas that are in original texts. Um, people use illusions sometimes to create humor. humor. So here we've got Cameron where he says, I burn, I pine, I perish. And we saw Lucentio say that in the Taming of the Shrew, and it's really hyperbolic and it's kind of over the top romantic and it's supposed to be sort of comedic. Um, sometimes to link to more serious ideas which have been associated with older text stories or people. Allusions can also be used to pay homage, there's that word again which you're going to find out what it means, to another text, composer or idea. So allusions are important basically because they reinforce ideas. Um, and because sometimes they're really fun to try and find. Alright, so good luck with your sheet. See you later.